Okay, today I want to talk about permeability tuned oscillators or PTOs. This is a, a concept for building a VFO that I think goes way back in ham radio, back to Collins days, of course. Collins had a, a PTO that basically just involved screwing into the inductor some ferrous material. They had a rather complicated circuit built up and you'd screw in this ferrous material. It would change the, um, the inductance of the coil and then you would use that to change the frequency of your oscillator. <clears throat> so the, real, the person who really sparked all this is Farhan, as, as is often the case, uh, with his daylight uh, again transceiver. And in the daylight again transceiver, he attempted to use, well, he uses a permeability tuned oscillator. And it's, it's similar to this one. Uh, it's a printed circuit, it's based on a printed circuit coil form. But really, all the the printed circuit, it, the, all the all the um, uh, not printed circuit. I mean, three D printed. It's early in the morning. Three D printed coil form, and that's what the blue thing is. Now, Dean KK four DAS took the files from Farhan and printed one up for me, and we have um, a brass screw. This thing here is just to take care of hand capacitance, and sure enough, as I screw this co this uh, brass screw in it changes the inductance of the coil. And I had built with this the same Hartley oscillator circuit that Farhan used in his um, Daylight Again, that he uses again in his Daylight Again uh, transceiver. And it worked It worked very well, it was very stable, and it was kind of cool. There were a couple things that I think give pause to some of us about this. One. When you turn in the screw, <laughs> as you're changing frequency, it's moving kind of in and out of the case. So um, it's um, uh, that that's kind of a negative. And I don't know. I just started thinking about PTOs and how to do it. There's a guy at the Vienna Wireless Radio Club, KA4 CDN, Mike Danhart, who had built a PTO with a really cool mechanism that allowed you to turn the dial and basically move the core without having the dial coming in and out of the case. Farhan joked in his presentation about the day, daylight transceiver that there was an advantage to doing it with a dial that would move in and out in that when you were finished using it, you could just pluck the, uh, the, the, the knob away and uh, the, 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 the rig could not be used by uh, passersby, things like that. I think Farhan was mostly, mostly kidding there. But anyway, I, this this sort of has been on the back of my mind for a while, in the back of my mind for a while. And then recently, we started getting uh, emails from a fellow named Paul Clark, who's a ham. I don't have his call. But he has been experimenting with how to make PTOs out of chapstick tubes and especially glue stick tubes. Now, the idea here is that on these, like on a glue stick, when you take off the top, right? Just like a chapstick, you turn the knob and the glue comes out, right? The idea is the knob turns, there's something in here moving to make the glue come out, but the knob is not moving in and out. That's pretty cool, that's a great idea. Plus they're kind of conveniently sized. Now, I had sitting here in the shack a um, glue stick, UHU, I think from Germany. But the mechanism is the same. I built one, and I want to show you how what I did to build it. Now, mine is really, really simple. And I'm going to use this other glue stick just to show you. So, um, you know, you, you, you could take off, take off the top. I got rid of the glue. So you saw I had the glue there before. And what I did is I just took a piece of ferrous material. This is powdered iron, a powdered iron core. It's about, I think it's a 0.5 uh, half inch diameter core. And what I did on mine is I just glued it, <laughs> super glued it, so that it would fit onto the moving part and allow the screw, the red thing in the center, to come up as you turned it. So you turn it like this, 
and this core would be moving in and out. You see what I'm talking about? Now, I just random, well, I didn't randomly, but I kind of randomly selected a core out of my junk box that looked to me like it was type 7 material. I'm not sure whether it is. I just kind of did it because I wanted to see how this thing would work. But I took the material. It was mostly um, a white color on the core, and I put it, glued it onto the end there, carefully glued it, let it dry it a little bit. And then I reassembled the thing. But you get the idea here, right? That's the idea. That's how I did it. And then I built it into here, and I hooked it up to the PTO circuit that, uh, that Farhan had designed. And I'm really, really kind of pleased with the results. Um, I was just fooling around with it this morning. I put about, well, I put nine turns of fairly thick magnet wire on the outside of the, uh, the glue stick. And you can see it's just held down at this point with duct tape. I tapped it at two turns because this is a Hartley oscillator. And then I just took this, I took the, the one that Farhan had, took it out and put this one in, connected the, the three places, one to ground, one to the tap connection and one to the top of the coil. And now I have it hooked up. It's powered up, it's pulling about <clears throat> 12 volts. It's pulling 37 uh, milliamps and I've got it on the scope. It's it's really stable. It's uh, it's really nice. It's nice, very stable. As was the uh, um, the oscillator with the um, with with the three uh, D printed uh, coil and the brass screw. Uh, but I think this is a this now becomes a true permeability tuned oscillator because as I move that that piece of iron powder in and out, it uh, it changes the permeability of the coil. And uh, we see frequency movement. So I'm going to show you guys what it what it looks like. Um, I guess I could I could even turn on the um, well. Let's let's just do it with. I'll just just show you what it looks like on the scope. So I'm going to tilt up here. There it is on the scope. Okay. So now I'm going to reach down and turn and move the dial. That little turn the move the glue out look at that boom frequency movement boom frequency movement but you see it's nice and smooth i can move in the other direction i can move in this direction look at that it's a thing of beauty <laughs> i think it's great and it's very stable now how much is it moving at this point well i um i built it just using the specs that farhan had in there and i think he was building his for around two megahertz so I was just testing it this morning, and it looks like with without any kind of experimentation or optimization or playing with the coil size or coil ratio and all that kind of stuff, I was able to, with this thing, move it just in, in two turns of the knob, move about 50 kcs. So one turn of the knob moved 25 kcs, the next turn of the knob moved 25 kcs, which is very linear. And that's one of the things that my, my good friend Pete Giuliano um, talks about when, when t discussing analog VFOs. It's good to avoid the bunching up of frequencies at one end or the other. And especially if you stay around the, the right point of the movement of the, uh, the piece of... Um, Kind of toroidal material that I have in there, you get about 25 kcs per turn, which I think is is about right. It's okay. I mean, we could we could play with this a lot more, and use different turns ratios and have the turns ratio changing as the coil moves through it. the The opportunities for experimentation are really uh, quite remarkable here, and it's a I think it's a very very cool little circuit. It's a, well, it's a cool circuit, but it's a, what Paul Clark came up with was a cool way of doing it, which, which I think is, uh, this would be really great for homebrew QRPers or homebrew rig builders because it gets us away from 
kind of the um, increasing scarcity of suitable uh, variable capacitors. They're getting harder and harder to find. Well, now we can make our make our own here using materials that you could buy in the supermarket, you know, uh, um, glue sticks, chapsticks. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. It, it reintroduces an element of, of the craft into, um, into home brewing. Anyway, what I think I'm going to do now is just play around with this thing a little bit and try to move the oscillator to uh, seven megahertz where we've been experimenting with direct conversion receivers and then just see about using it as, um, as a, a VFO in a direct conversion receiver using the, uh, the whole glue stick chapstick concept. So anyway, three cheers for, um, for Paul Clark and, uh, thanks to Mike Danhart and to, uh, and to Dean KK4 DIS for, um, helping me with the, uh, with the 3d printing and the, uh, and the concept of, of how to move that uh, piece of ferrous material in a, Suppose in a in a permanent permeability tuned oscillator, the chapstick thing, the glue stick thing, I think is a, a really really cool innovation. So I'm gonna put the camera back down. Hold on, before we move, let me just tune it a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go back so you can see the whole thing in action. Wait a second, gotta see the scope. Okay, so now you can see the scope. Well, let me see back a little bit more. <laughs> All right, now you got you can see the scope and you can see the uh, the little oscillator here. Now you can see me too. All right, but I'm going to turn the knob here. This is how you turn the knob. Watch the scope. Look at that. Look at that. And I got this thing marked here, so it's like one turn. I just I just there was some marks on the on the thing, so just go one turn, one turn. Really nice. The mechanism actually feels smooth on this particular one. It's nice. I mean, I, you, you could make a workable, a workable rig out of this thing. Out of Elmer's glue sticks or chapsticks. Wow, pretty cool. All right, uh, that's it for now. I think we'll go back to the DC receivers here in a little bit. You can see my, the DC receiver I've been working on over here in the corner. But um, that's been that's been real interesting too. All right. So for now, seven three from Northern Virginia.